Hi folks, John Dunn here, RPG freelancer, publisher behind Melly Revia. Tonight I'm up here at Immortals Inc. with Mikey working the boards. And you got a fancy stash behind you, John. <laughs> it is a most impressive stash. Before I get into that, have you ever heard of Baron Munchausen? Because no. that's who's the man behind the stash. Real guy? R- probably a real guy. Actually, definitely a real guy. He's a little known for embellishment. And it's possible even that stash might be embellished a little. Baron Munchausen doesn't get a ton of press in the United States. I think he might be a little bit better known in Europe. Perhaps you've heard of Terry Gilliam. Mm -mm. Perhaps you've heard of Monty Python. Yes. All right. So Terry Gilliam is one of the members of the Monty Python crew. And he made a movie about Baron Munchausen uh, more than a few years back. Uh, The movie was, I'm sure, 100% factual and accurate to the actual circumstances of Baron Munchausen's life. Baron Munchausen was a noble out of Prussia, I believe in the late 1700s, early 1800s, who fought in some wars in Russia and was known after he came back to Prussia for recounting the adventures he had during those travels. And some ignoble fools might dare to question his honor and suggest that he might on occasion have slightly embellished some of those tales. Tales about things like the time he went to the moon, the time he rode a cannonball between cities. I believe him. Well, as well you should, for he is, and was, rather was, a man of noble birth, right? How dare you question that? Exactly. And Only a fool would dare to question a noble. Well, uh, James Wallace is a man who knew better than to question him when he penned The Extraordinary Adventures of Baron Munchausen. This copy is actually the third edition of the game, published by Fantasy Flight Games. So it's been through three editions. The one I actually played was the first, but it hasn't changed a ton in those different iterations, uh, except to have been expanded a bit. When this is... On the shelves with the role-playing games, it maybe isn't what you would typically think of when you think of a role-playing game. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, what is this about? So, it's a storytelling game. Generally, when you're talking about RPGs and you say a storytelling game, you think, oh, it uses the White Wolf system. No, no, it has nothing to do with Vampire the Masquerade. It is a game about sitting down with your friends and telling stories. Stories, of course, which are absolutely 100% completely true without any embellishments whatsoever. Like I said, like the Terry Gilliam movie about Baron Munchausen. Uh, did you ever see a movie by the name of Big Fish? Big Fish. When was it released? Oh, probably 20, 25 years ago. It was a Tim Burton movie. Mm-mm. Tim okay. Burton is he's pretty inspirational, but no, yeah, I haven't seen it. He is. All right. It's another good flick. You should check it out when you get a chance. I will. I will. Uh, It was about a kid whose dad would tell him nighttime stories and would always assure him that these stories were completely true and the stories were, let's say, highly improbable throughout. These kinds of stories, really, we'd probably call them tall tales now, are what the game's all about. So you sit down with a bunch of your friends. Each of you assumes the role, and when I say assumes, it's very loosely, of an 18th century noble. And you take turns telling stories and each of the stories should be about five minutes in length and as you're telling these stories there's kind of a drinking system and a bidding system wait so do you have to actually drink you have to actually drink so is this a 21 and over game well there is an iteration for under 21 and i suppose the drink you're consuming doesn't have to be alcoholic but it really should be I mean, I mean if to gonna, not... really capture the spirit of the nobility, it really should be. Okay. Because, I mean, I kind of like this game. I like where it's going. <laughs> it's very different. You I just mean, like the fact that you can get drunk and gamble. Yeah, and tell stories. <laughs> but they're 100% true. Well, of course they're true. Well, I'm listening. I'm listening. All right, because, I mean, if you look at the pictures back here, you can see the Baron riding a cannonball and the Baron dueling with Cthulhu. So... Obviously, is these that Cthulhu? Stories, that is totally Cthulhu. They, uh, that's a kind of a crop of one of the images from inside the book. What an Easter egg! Yeah, well, you know, I had to put it up there when I saw that. Yeah, we knew it. The way the game basically works is you sit down next to your friend. You all have a beverage, and you say, "Ah, good sir, would you tell me of the time that you escaped Paris before a horde of rampaging rhinoceroses?" And you have to tell that on the spot. 
Well, I thought you would tell me about it, Mike. Oh, well, the, the, the time that I uh, <laughs> escaped was uh, pleasant. Yeah, that's exactly how the game works. <laughs> and as you're telling the story, somebody can interrupt your story by holding up a coin and adding a complication to it. I'll be like, don't interrupt me. <laughs> don't interrupt me. And you need to add to it. Or if you do, you get to take their money. And if you refuse, you have to pay them back. Their mo- You have to match their money. I need to borrow so, like a sword or like a pipe to have in my mouth well, when I play So that's game. the great thing. It's a bidding system, right? But if somebody questions what you were saying as whether or not it's true, well, then you have to duel. <laughs> Wait, legitimately duel? Absolutely legitimately duel. And the author says, you know, any decent noble should have their sword on them at all times to conduct the duel. But if the house rules forbid bloodshed... Then you play rock, scissors, paper. I don't know about rock, scissors, paper, rock, paper, scissors, whatever. I don't know about that. I think it has to end with a duel. Well, I agree. A proper duel. I agree with you. An honest duel. Um, If when your turn comes around, you don't have a story ready, your alternative is to buy a round of drinks for the table. And when I ask all these questions, is this real life? You have to do this? Of course. You yes. To, your pockets are empty <laughs> and you're a liar by the end of this game. <laughs> well, not for the person who wins. And you're drunk. You're the person drunk. who wins gets the purse from everybody else at the end. But because they've won, they need to use that money to buy the next round and to start the next round of the game. And when I propose you tell your story, do you have any time to think about it or is it right on the spot? Uh, you can say, um, and take a drink. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> it, was that you giving me advice or was that legitimate? No, that game is rules? legit part of the rules. Okay, cool. Yeah. This might be one of my favorite games we reviewed so far, <laughs> and I'm not lying. No, it's it's a ball to play. It's a real it's a good party game. People don't have to be real serious role players, but they do have to be reasonably creative or willing to, you know, repeatedly buy a round for everybody. When have you uh, last played this game? It's been a few years. Yeah, we got to run this again or something, man. (laughs) Uh, It's a good time. So a couple other things about it. If you don't have great questions to ask the people around you, there is a whole bunch of story hooks in here as an index that you can just flip to and quickly read through, you know, run your finger down a page and say, ah, yes, good noble, good baron, good bishop. Tell me about this time. Uh, Or you can, you know, just come up with something of your own off the cuff. Uh, There are a couple of variants that are introduced in the book as well. Uh, One of them is the Arabian variant where you're not allowed to have alcoholic beverages and you're not allowed to gamble. So it changes the rules a little bit. Uh, There's a child-friendly variant where, again, those things are a little different and perhaps the gameplay might be a little, or at least the stories might be a bit less lurid. I'm guessing they involve Nerf swords. (laughs) It's a lot of fun. It's 25 bucks and I think it's about 130 pages. It is full color throughout. It's hardcover. And it's here on the shelf at Immortal Zinc. Nobleman John, might I ask the one time you were forced to do an Immortal Zinc podcast? Oh, Mikey, I think you're going to have to fill my glass before you get that full story. And I think you guys have to hit that sub button. Thanks for watching. Stop in. 